bowel maneuver test. Patient is going to be supine with their heels off the end of the table. Good. Thank you. I'm going to hold the feet of the patient and place thumbs over the medial malleoli while providing slight, slight traction to the legs. And I'm going to instruct him to flex his knees and hips onto the table and then bridge up. So basically, this is going to be what we like to call the hip clearing maneuver. So I'm going to grab Scott's legs like this. Go ahead and bend your legs up. Tell him to do this. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure here. I'm going to tell Scott to bridge up, lift your butt up, and come back down. That is called the Weber bar step. That's all it is. Um, and then we're going to move to the sit. Supine is a long sit test, so it's the same thing. I'm going to have the patient in the supine position. I'm going to clear the hips, which is doing Weber bar style. So I'm going to do the same thing. Bend your knees. Bend them together, Scott. What? <laughs> Scott, keep your legs together. Oh. Thanks, Scott. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Notice my eyes were at the ceiling the entire time. Okay, let's clear our hips, Scott. You said. Let's clear our hips, Scott. Lift your pelvis up. Thank you. Put it back down. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull his patient, his legs out here and tell him to uh, sit up. And I'm going to look at the position of his malleoli. So if you look at my thumbs, which you guys can't see over there, um, they're a little bit off. They should be the same. This, di a little bit of difference right here, is not necessarily a problem. You can see it on his feet. So. Yeah. It's not that big of a problem like this because it's not more than a quarter of an inch. So we can do this real quick again. Go ahead and lay down. We're going to bend up, bridge up, back down, and pull his legs back up. And then sit up. See, now that one, he said him normal. We cleared his hip, and now he's good. Okay? All right, so now the supine true leg length discrepancy test. We're going to have, um, we're going to lay the patient supine again. We're going to clear the hips, so go ahead and do the same thing. Knees up, bridge up, back down. And then I'm going to extend both legs. And what I'm going to measure at this point is the top of Scott's ASIS right here. And I believe it's a medial malleoli. Um, to lateral malleoli. So I'm not going to tell you. You guys don't have to get out of the tape measure at this point. But I just want you to tell me you're going to measure from his ASIS to the lateral malleolus. So that's that bump on the outside of the ankle. Okay? What does it mean when you're saying like clearing the hips? Like what does that, that mean? That movement, it's making everything in neutral. Okay. Clear in the hips puts everything no, in neutral. I need to take my shoes off because I need to get more. No, you're good right okay. now. Okay. Athlete, this is the clinical discrimination between femoral and tibial leg length discrepancy. Whoa. I know, it's a long name. I, we'll be all right. So, athlete is laying supine with his hip flex to 45. Okay. And knee flex to 90. Both feet are lined up next to each other. Medial malleoli and the MTP joints should be very close to each other, so they're right there. Um, I'm going to have examiner holds the athlete's feet on the table, instructs him to bridge up, and then come back down. So now I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the side. I'm going to be looking at his tibial tubercles right here, and tell him to do the same thing, and go back down. And we're just looking at the tibial tubercles at this point. And then I would be going and telling him to do the same thing. And we're going to look at his patellas this time. Okay? That's what are you looking for? We're looking to see if there's a difference between the two. So a lot of these tests, like them doing it and you watching? Some of these, yeah. But we're going to start getting into the more hands-on stuff here soon. So Gaines lens test is patient is lying supine, close to the side of the table. So scoot forward to me, Scott. <coughs> I'm going to let this leg hang off. This table's a little short, so we'll be all right. Um, and I'm going to instruct the athlete to actively flex this leg and hold it to his chest. Oh. Yep, right? And then this is where he's not going to like it, so Scott, it's okay if you cry on this one. All right. Okay. I'm going to push down right here. If he's over a little bit farther, scoot your butt this way. There we go. All right, so you kind of want his butt cheek hanging off, and you can <laughs> push down like that. And you should be, able, he should feel a stretch on that. Should feel well, kind of good. It, yeah, it does feel good, but the, like my foot's like in the ground. Yeah, so if we were on a taller table, um, we're going to push down. Uh, his foot wouldn't be testing or touching the ground. Um, but that's for SI joint pain. So, and it's also a really, really good stretch for the quad. Go ahead and scoot back over. All right, athlete is seated with knees over the edge of the table. I'm going to place my forearm or something underneath his mid thigh 
and the other hand to push down his anterior thigh. This is called the fulcrum test. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift Scott's leg, push it here, and I'm pushing down on the thigh. Yeah, it feels great on my arm too, by the way. So uh, that's for her a possible femoral stress fracture because if you think about it, we're just applying a whole bunch of fresh uh, pressure right there. Hip scouring test. Go ahead and lay back down. The examiner is going to fully flex the hip and the knee. So we're gonna bring this as far up to your butt as you can. Okay. And then we're gonna apply downward pressure along the femoral shaft while we're repeatedly internally and externally rotating the hip in multiple angles of flexion. So we'll probably do one at a time, so go ahead and let that one out. So we've got his leg all the way up here. I'm gonna turn him this way. That was your knee. Uh, turn him this way and this way. Then we're gonna go this way, and I'm still pushing down and turning him in. And now, and go this way, in and out. And that's hip scouring, because you're literally shoving the femoral condyle into the hip, and you're moving it from side to side. So you're scouring that hip joint. SI compression test. Examiner is going to apply, or he's gotta be supine, and I'm gonna apply pressure to the ASIS. Remember, ASIS, ASIS are at the tops of your hips. So you can do it like this. I'm just gonna literally grab the top of Scott's hips and push down. Some people do it this way, but I just do it this way. I feel like that would feel good. I feel like that would pop my back. I don't know why, but I feel like it would. <laughs> so you just push down. Distract SI distraction test. I'm gonna have a sideline, so face brace. Um, Examiner is positioned behind the athlete uh, with both hands on the lateral aspect of the pelvis and I'm going to apply a downward force, uh, pressure up through the anterior portion of the ilium. So basically I'm going to go on the side of his hip and like do CPR on his hip. I'm going to try to open ah. the SI joint. Okay. Oh, he did get Scott. Piriformis tightness. Athlete is sideline. <laughs> Why did you move Scott? I know, I didn't tell you move. All right. The leg we're testing is gonna be this one. It's gonna be on top, okay? Athlete's test leg is flexed to about 60 on the hip. So we're gonna go just a little bit out, and the knee is flexed. And what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna push down. Ooh. And IT band tightness, uh, piriformis pain. I was about to say, so yeah, I'll stretch your IT band. He will feel this one if he's as tight as he says he is, which he is. 90-90 um, straight leg raising. Athlete is supine. Ah. Hips and knees both flex to 90, so lift your legs up off the table, like this. Put the other one up that way too. Oh. Thank you. Athlete is going to grasp between, behind his thighs and stabilize the hip joints just like so. And then I'm going to have him actively extend his knee. So go ahead and, no. Like that? Yep. One each time. Oh, I'm tired. There you go. I can sure. tell. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, good. so no this test is for hamstring muscle tightness. <laughs> I'm tight. I'm sure I have that one. <laughs> the Ellie's test, I'm gonna have the athlete prone with knees extended, so prone. Prone is on your belly. <laughs> this one's really, really easy because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab his foot, I'm gonna flex his knee, and I'm looking at his hips. So Scott had like no movement, that's good. If you have tightness, it's gonna you're gonna see a hip hike up right away as soon as I start flexing this foot. And so he's just got a little bit of movement, which is what we want, but you don't see his hip really flying up. Granted, he's got a big old jersey, so. Oh. We're gonna just do your shirt right there. <laughs> How many layers do you got on? It's like 90 degrees outside, Scott. Stop. No, you're fine, thing. you're fine. Just stay <laughs> I just need to see the t-shirt. So now we can kind of see. There you go. See his hip doesn't really move. You don't see a lot of movement in the hips. So